Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast featuring Roger Drummer, the formulator at HerbWorks.com. An educator in the field of nutrition and Chinese herbalism, Roger has a unique ability to keep things simple by taking all the guesswork out of complicated health issues. HerbWorks is committed to helping you improve your health and enhance your life through herbs and common sense. So today with this topic of exploring immunity, we're going to be covering things like antibiotics, how to survive antibiotics, resistance to antibiotics, a lot of things about antibiotics, mainly because it's it's such a big topic in the health field and how it affects immunity and how your body responds, infections, and then really get into some good herbs you can have in the house to uh, help protect you and maybe um, be your first line of defense so you don't have to go get antibiotics. So we're going to cover all those things today. And I think we're going to start out here really by looking at antibiotics and, and how to survive them. Because literally almost everybody in the world is going to take an antibiotic once in a while. I've had them, let me think, three times in the last four years. Um, one was had to deal with an issue due to cancer, so I couldn't avoid that one. One had to do with an injury where it was a localized infection. And when someone says, you might lose your leg, I think I'll take an antibiotic. (laughs) And the other one, I don't remember. But it has to be a drastic situation for me to do it. And yet, I know a lot of things about how to survive them and what to do for my own body when it happens. So I don't let it worry me. But I'd be really happy if I didn't take one again for the rest of my life. But I do go through this recovery every time I ever have to have one. And that's the big issue, really, with antibiotics, is don't take them unless you absolutely have to. And then if you do, you got to go through a recovery phase. You can't just stop taking them and go back to normal life. Because believe me, you can't have a normal life with the body that the antibiotics have left you with because they've left you with a system that doesn't have its own beneficial bacteria in your intestines. And if that's the case, then your body's not making the normal amount of neurotransmitters. It's not making all the chemicals you need to keep you into homeostasis, for your body to actually thrive and survive. None of these things are going on. And in fact, your immune system is weaker because a good 75% of your immune system comes from this bacteria in your digestion, in your intestines that communicates with each other and forms these chemicals, fights off viruses, does all these amazing things that you can't hardly cover it all, but it all goes back to the microbiome, the the amazing amount of bacteria you have in your system. And all of that is damaged when you take an antibiotic. So the very thing that saves your life could be the thing that causes long-term issues. And if you don't correct it right away, you run into problems. This is kind of how you could describe all of Western medicine. The very things they have that save you will cause long-term damage. So you have to be able to look at these things and realize it and do something on your own for your own health. You know, it comes to mind one of the great examples of that is high blood pressure medication. Now, you can take high blood pressure pressure medication because it might save your life. Let's say you have really radically high blood pressure when you go to the doctor's office. You have to take a medicine to get that down in a range so you don't have a stroke. So something doesn't happen to you as an emergency and put you in the hospital. But once you get on that medicine, you should then look at your lifestyle, your diet, and decide what you're going to do to help your body correct itself and not just stay on the medication because long-term, high blood pressure medications shorten your life. They save your life and shorten your life at the same time. It depends on how long you're on them. And so they disrupt brain function, could be the cause of your memory issues that you're experiencing, all these different things. And yet you can change that pattern in your own system by just looking at how do I help support my own body to survive this 
incident I have going on right at the moment. And you'd be surprised if someone completely changed their diet 30 days later, if they took the same amount of medication, let's say again for high blood pressure, it might drive them into such low blood pressure that they have a different issue. So you have to be able to watch this, but your body does recover. You can change all these things. So it's the same way with your immune system. You know, everybody needs antibiotics from time to time. Antibiotics were easily the greatest discovery of the last 100 years in modern medicine. The amount of people's lives that were saved by antibiotics is astounding. I read stories of hospitals full of people dying of bronchitis and pneumonia that magically got up and walked out of the hospital when this little magic powder showed up and they gave him little packets of it when it was first discovered. The amount of injuries and things that people recovered from in times of war, it just goes on and on and on. Antibiotics um, were, you know, it's got to be the greatest discovery ever, but everything has a downside. And what happened? We fell in love with antibiotics. And so antibiotics started being given out for colds and flus. But the biggest problem with antibiotics doesn't even have to do with the fact that we overconsume them. It has to do that it, it made the whole medical research world fall in love with single chemical answers to every problem that you have. And single chemical answers usually only work for um, bacteria or infections. They don't work for complex problems like memory issues, complex problems like heart issues, uh, basically complex problems that have anything else <laughs> to do with your whole body because everything's complex. It all has to do with what you put in it, your thought system. One single ingredient usually doesn't change that. And they're finding that out with memory issues, but they still keep plowing forward on everything. They're finding that out with cancer, but where does all the money for research go? It goes to finding a single chemical bomb to apply to your cancer, and it's really a dead-end road. And all that started by antibiotic use. So again, something absolutely wonderful turned into something that's causing a lot of problems. So... One of the problems, you probably hear this all in the news all the time, is that, you know, we have all this antibiotic-resistant bacteria, um, all these cases of people getting these weird bacteria that antibiotics doesn't do anything for. And so they end up passing away or dying in, you know, in some situation that you would typically think you could just take an antibiotic and get over it. And this is because we've become so accustomed to having these things in our system that our body has built up a resistance. This bacteria we have inside of us has built up a resistance to be able to survive these antibiotics. And so now you have um, you know, people walking around that have been exposed to so many antibiotics that their body has created this massive resistance to these drugs. And then you have the other problem is that nobody is investing money in creating new ones because there's not a lot of money in antibiotics compared to antidepressants or other drugs they can get you on for the rest of your life. And antibiotics is a short-term issue. Right, So you're only going to make so much money on an antibiotic and a lot of companies that um, want to get the biggest bang for their buck when they're investing in medicine don't want to do it. This podcast is brought to you by Herbworks, specializing in stress and brain essentials. Check out Roger's other articles and videos at Herbworks.com. While you're there, take a look at our natural herbal based product line for energy stress immunity and sleep now back to roger and so how do we become so resistant to these antibiotics is everybody just walking around taking antibiotics three or four times a year no really that's not how it happens it does feed into that i mean doctors did go into a phase where they over prescribed antibiotics but We've kind of moved forward from that. In the last 10, 15 years, they've become more aware, and they just don't hand them out like candy like they did before. But we still have a lot of antibiotic use in this country. You'd be surprised where most of this resistance comes from, and it actually comes from the diet. It comes from your lunch you just had. 
If you're a typical person buying just normal food at a grocery store and you bought some hamburger or maybe a chicken and you went home and barbecued it and uh, you just basically had some antibiotics with your lunch. You're going to have antibiotics with your dinner when you repeat the process. Um, you're going to have antibiotics probably two to three times a day. It's in your milk. It's in the eggs that you buy. It's in the meat that you buy. And this is where all of our antibiotics come from is that, you know, Tens of millions of pounds of antibiotics are put in animal feed every year, partly because it helps resist infections, partly because it makes the animals gain weight. They all get fatter when they're going to market. So antibiotics are a good thing, you know, if you're a farmer and want to fatten up your cows. So 70% of all the antibiotics used in the United States are going into animal feed. You know, you might think, well... How, how is that possible? Well, in one aspect, you look at the fact that it does make animals gain weight and you make more money when your animal's heavier when you take it to market. The other thing is, is that cows, for instance, are actually allergic to corn. Corn is what we feed cows. We feed a ton of corn to cows because we have so much of it and we don't know what to do with it. And so we feed it to our cows. Cows are meant to eat grass. So when you're giving them something every single day that they have to eat um, and they're allergic to it, quite a few things happen. One, it fattens them up because, you know, anytime you have allergies and you keep consuming something, one of the tendencies is, is your body puts on weight. And so it fattens them up a bit. It's cheap, um, but it, they're also makes the cows sick. And so oftentimes you have to have antibiotics in these animals all the time to deal with the infections they're getting from the feed that you give them. So there's all these things happening in in the United States and how we grow our meat and how we grow our food, but it's literally loaded with antibiotics. And so you're getting what would be considered a homeopathic dose of an antibiotic every single time you eat. It's that prevalent in the food system. Now, it might not even be that, say, you're not eating meat, you're a vegetarian. Well, it could be just that you're buying produce that was grown on a farm where they use manure as one of their fertilizers, and it has antibiotics in it because it's from animals that eat tons of antibiotics. So it's, it's everywhere, right? They now have, um, you hear stories about how we now have such great testing in the environment, and we can test our water. And a lot of munici municipal water systems have water that has 10 to 12 different drugs in it when they do the test. Think about it, it has antidepressants in it. You can get homeopathic doses of antidepressants, of antibiotics, of steroids, of all different types of drugs because there's so much of it in the American system, and it's being refiltered and reprocessed as a waste product and sent back to your house as clean water, supposedly. And so there's just all these ways that we're exposed to these things. And this is where all this antibiotic resistance comes from. And you'd be surprised. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard of something called MRSA. MRSA is an infection that people pick up mainly in the hospital. And this is, you know, another good reason to stay healthy is that if you stay in the hospital for a prolonged period of time, there's a really good chance you can catch a good case of MRSA, which is an infection that's basically derived from this antibiotic resistance. In, you know, in fact, JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, published an article that said there's about 100,000 cases of MRSA a year. And out of that 100,000, 18,600 people die. That's more people die from MRSA, which is an antibiotic-resistant infection, than people that die from AIDS. And yet, are we doing anything about it? Not really. In fact, I heard the FDA is going through a process right now of trying to gather information about how to reduce the number of antibiotics in livestock. But more than likely, they're going to meet some resistance from the people that are actually using them. And think about it. If tens of millions of pounds of antibiotics are being put in the animal feed, then that's quite a big chunk of business. So I'm sure there's some drug companies that are going to be fighting that legislation also. 
They're not going to be real happy with the FDA if they try to cut back on the amount of antibiotics used in livestock because it's a moneymaker. So you look at the fact that the chicken you buy from a grocery store, if it's not organic, could have 460 times the amount of pathogens in it as organic chicken. Wow, that's a huge number. And now you're kind of getting an idea of what you might be able to do to avoid all these antibiotics. You have to buy organic. It's not allowed in the food. So if you're buying organic beef, which is usually grass-fed, you're buying organic chicken, pork, all these different things, you can avoid this load of antibiotics that's in your food. You know, this goes back to the thing I always talk about, buy organic. Eat a little less. You're wasting so much food. Most people throw away so much food that if you got conscious about what you buy and you regulate it, you'll find that you buy less even though you pay slightly more. And so, but the big thing is you avoid pesticides, you avoid toxic chemicals, and you avoid antibiotics in your food. Who wants to have a homeopathic dose of antibiotics every time you sit down and have a sandwich? doesn't make any sense. And so, and it's a big issue. I mean, with this MRSA infections, I remember reading a study from 12, 15 years ago where Denmark had a problem where 5% of all the people that went to a hospital got a MRSA infection. And so they put this um, new law into effect where you had to extremely restrict the amount of antibiotics used in animal feed. And within a couple of years, that dropped down to less than a half of a percent. So these things take effect quite quickly. And so it does work. And this is something we should be pushing for in our own country. Because, you know, 18,000 deaths from going to the hospital and catching a secondary issue is just not, just should never be allowed to happen in a, in a civilized country, basically. So some of the big diseases that are all have, an, you know, antibiotic resistance making an impact in how we treat them today is TB, typhoid fever, gonorrhea. All these things, these are big issues. These are things that affect a lot of people. And so this is why we keep seeing articles all the time that we're, we're you know, the, the government's worried about the huge epidemic that might hit our country. Uh, this huge epidemic of some bacteria, some flu, something's going to hit the country and we aren't prepared for it. It all comes back to antibiotics. Now, one of the other sources for antibiotics is is, uh, you know, dentistry. There's a lot of antibiotics given out for certain procedures and when you go to the dentist, and even they are becoming aware of how they have to stop giving out random antibiotics for things like people that have heart issues and all these because they're really over-prescribing these drugs. And again, anytime you can cut back on your exposure to them, whether it's going to the dentist, whether it's through buying your food, whether it's thinking because you have a cold, you need to get one to recover quicker. All these things we have to be conscious of so that we can cut back on our own consumption of these drugs. So I have a personal story about antibiotics I want to share because it really points out the danger of some of these drugs. And the one I want to talk about is a antibiotic that falls into a category, which is really hard to pronounce. And if you know me, I have hard time with seven syllable words, but it's called a fluoroquinolone, which basically means it's an antibiotic that's combined with fluoride. Now, isn't that nice? You get an antibiotic, which is destroying your internal bacteria, and it's combined with fluoride, which destroys your internal bacteria. <laughs> and uh, the fluoride makes it up into your brain because you're taking an antibiotic. So I took one called Cipro when I was first diagnosed with cancer because I was having blood clots and passing a lot of blood. And, and it worked. I thought it was a miracle drug. And yet when the, the pharmacist handed it to me, he said, if you get any pain in your connective tissue, in especially your Achilles tendon, if it starts hurting the first day you take it, stop it immediately and don't take another one and come back and I'll give you something else. 
Well, I didn't have that problem. Turns out my wife did when she took it once. Only took one pill and she felt the pain. And so basically it turns out that this class of antibiotics has a lot of side effects. I mean, a, a lot of side effects. And the main one is it disrupts your connective t- tissue. In fact, it's kind of funny. A, a month after I took Cipro, I had a client contact me who had taken the same exact drug and developed a full body connective tissue disorder. His connective tissue was breaking down. It wasn't just affecting his Achilles tendon, but it was a full body experience. And so, holy cow, you know, it's just like you you wonder how these things stay on the market when they have that much side effects. Now, I have to say, it did wonders for me. It stopped my bleeding. My blood clots went away within six or eight hours, but it left, left me with neuropathy. I still have neuropathy in the front part of both of my feet. I'm taking things for it all the time. It does not cause me pain, but the last three or four inches of both of my feet are numb. And so, again, had wonderful things happen with this drug, have some not so wonderful things that are still sticking around. So we have to be aware of this. And I would tell almost anyone, unless you're in a life and death situation, I would never take one of these antibiotics that are fall into that class of fluoroquinolones, which means it's an antibiotic combined with a fluoride. That's the, that's the antibiotic they, they hold in, in reserve for when you're exposed to anthrax. Remember when Congress and some people in the Senate were exposed to anthrax, somebody was sending it to them. Well, the number one thing for that is Cipro. You know, it's, it's a really powerful, effective antibiotic. It's just that you have amazing amounts of side effects from it. You can have retinal detachment, neuropathy, which is what I had, kidney failure, ruptured tendons, nervous system disorders. Why nervous system disorders? Because, again, it's combined with fluoride, and you're taking a toxic level of fluoride every time you take it, and it makes it up past your blood-brain barrier into your brain. And so all these things we have to be aware of, but just antibiotics in general. And so... What can we do to actually survive antibiotics? Because we're all going to be have to take one once in a while. What can we actually do to fight back and to keep our system sane and, and healthy? Well, there's a lot of foods out there that rebuild your beneficial bacteria. You always want to take a probiotic after you've had a, uh, a bout of antibiotics. But the, you don't want to ignore food. Things like sauerkraut, tamari sauce, tempeh, kimchi... Fermented pickles, kefir, which is a fermented type of liquid yogurt, apple cider vinegar, if it's raw apple cider vinegar, miso, all these things have beneficial bacteria that can rebuild your system. In fact, if you're eating a good live sauerkraut, one dose of that, one serving, can have as much beneficial bacteria in it as an entire bottle of capsules of probiotics. In case you're not familiar with probiotics, it's a... It's a form of um, supplement that you can take usually in a capsule that helps build beneficial bacteria. The problem with them is that a lot of it's destroyed in your digestive system, in your stomach, in your small intestine. So it doesn't make it down to where you actually really need it. But there's a way around that. In fact, I've suggested that to a lot, this to a lot of people. I read about it and heard about it on Dr. Perlmutter's website. He's a famous neurologist who writes a lot of books about um, your brain energy, keeping your memory, um, allergies to grains, things about gluten. Very famous man and a lot of great information if you get any of his books. But he had this story about how he had gotten a child who had severe health issues related to antibiotic use And he suggested that he actually take his antibiotic, open the cap, and put it into an enema and use it. And the the kid actually did it a couple times a week and had just life-altering changes to his system happen because it was injected right into the area of his body, his large intestine, where it needed to work. And according to the medical claims of doing this, 
it's as close to having a fecal implant put into your system. If you're not familiar with that, it's where they take actual fecal bacteria and reintroduce it into another human being system, either through a pill or through a, an implant, if you can imagine. And so um, I've actually suggested this to several people, and they have amazing results from it. So if you're someone who's had a lot of antibiotics and a lot of exposure to them over your lifetime and you're experiencing health problems, this is something you might want to look into. And you really want to make sure that you get a broad spectrum of probiotics, something with a lot of bifidobacterium and a lot of lactobacillus in it. So you want to blend of both, but I would definitely look into either talking to your medical practitioner, your health practitioner, about how you can actually do this if you're confused about it, or maybe just look up uh, the book I read about it, read it about it in was called The Grain Brain, and that was by Dr. Perlmutter. Now, you know, there's general things you can do and have on hand to boost your immune system. And this is something that I do all the time. And this is, you know, in my house, because I'm an herbalist, right? I own an herb company. Everybody knows this is the Herb Works podcast. Um, I don't just take the herbs that I make myself. I take a lot of those, but I also have things on hand for emergencies and to help treat my kids. You know, my kids get sick. They go to school. They're exposed to things. So my whole family takes the mushroom complex, which is the immune system formula that I make myself. And that is an amazing formula for building general immunity. It's great for protecting your liver from toxins, um, fighting viruses, all these different things. But when you get sick and you have an acute condition, mushrooms are okay to take when you have an acute condition, but you also want to combine them with something that's more just like a medicine. So I always have a range of things in my house in case something happens. Something with one of my kids, they get a little bit of an infection that's going in their lungs. I don't want them to have to run off to the doctor unless they absolutely have to. So some of the things I always have on hand, one of them's olive leaf. Olive leaf has so many beneficial properties. In fact, it wasn't until another herbalist turned me on to the fact that they use it for lung infections and for general colds and flus and infections because I always thought of olive leaf as something that's great for your arteries, it's really good for your heart, um, those types of things. But once I tried it, hey, it really works really well. I combine it with my Chinese herbs. When I have anything going on with my lungs or I think my kids are developing something in their lungs, olive leaf is easily available at any health food store. You can get it in liquid form. You can get it in liquid capsule form. But just get some olive leaf and add it to your program or have it at home in case you feel something going into your lungs. Another great one, a really amazing substance, is called oregano oil. Oregano oil is amazing as a natural antibiotic. That's something that I always have in my house. If I feel like something, something strong is coming into my system, I take oregano oil at least two to three times a day. And you have to watch with this one. You, you have to take it right before you eat or with a little bit of food because it can actually hurt your stomach. But that's something with olive leaf that I always have in my house. I just There's just never a time it's not there. I might go three to four months and never take either one of these things, but I know it's sitting there. I know it's there if my kids need it. I know it's just it's part of my first aid kit. Same way with garlic. Garlic has some amazing properties for boosting your immune system, for helping your liver to produce more glutathione, which will help you fight anything. And then it also has a lot of antiviral, antibacterial properties. Now, I don't feel really good on garlic extract when I take it, um, if I'm taking it for a long period of time. So garlic is not one of my daily staples. I know there's a lot of people that take garlic every single day. I'm not one of those people. I don't like it that way. But that doesn't mean when I don't feel something coming on that I might not throw down a lot of garlic along with my other supplements just to help boost it out of my system. So I might sit down if I feel like something's going into my lungs, take four or five of my mushroom complex, 
add a couple of oregano oil, a couple of olive leaf, and a capsule of garlic to it. And that'd be like my little medicinal dose to help get me over the hump. So this is how I do it with everything. I always want something that's more of a tonic nature, like the mushroom complex, because it, it's just building and activating my own immune system. And then I add these other slightly antiviral bacterial types of herbs that help clear things out to that mix. And now I have a broad-based program. You know, a lot of people have heard of Echinacea golden seal. Um, I don't particularly warm up very much to golden seal because it's so harsh on your system. It's a very powerful um, antibacterial herb, but it's also very cold and it absolutely tastes horrible. <laughs> so I have a hard time ever putting it in my system. And it's hard to find that in a really good concentrated capsule. And so, but I do believe if you really have something coming on, like your throat is scratchy and you're feeling a little bit hot, this is something to pay attention to. If you're starting to get sick and you're feeling a little bit warm and a scratchy throat, that's the perfect time to take Echinacea Golden Seal because those particular herbs, besides being powerful stimulants to your immune system and having some properties to fight bacteria and, and viral infections. Besides all that, they clear heat. They'll make you feel, um, they'll, they'll clear that feeling of that sweatiness or that, that heat that's building up in your throat that's coming on. So if you have that, that type of a condition where you really feel hot and scratchy, echinacea is a great herb at that moment. But the, the thing with echinacea, though, is that it's pretty effective in large doses for about three days. And then you probably want to taper off of it, take a few days off, and then slam it again because your body adjusts to it. It's just one of those things you have to cycle in and out of. But again, the best thing, in my opinion, is to have these things on hand. Make an investment, especially, you know, heck, we're in August now. We're going to be winding up in the fall here pretty soon. What you should be doing right now for your immune system is planning for November. You know, it's August. It's time to plan for October and November. And how do you do that? If you're someone who catches a couple colds or maybe gets a flu every year, you should be taking mushrooms right now to get your immune system regulated and boosted to the point where it can resist most of the things you're going to be exposed to in the fall. So right now, instead of taking four caps of mushroom complex, you should be taking four twice a day. And then you should be out to the store one of these days and making sure you have some oregano oil on hand, at least oregano oil, olive leaf, maybe a bottle of echinacea, things you can put in your medicine cabinet in case you feel something coming on. This is how, uh, this is much better plan of action than waiting till something happens and now you just don't feel good and you don't want to drive down to the store and so you're going to go to sleep and hope you'll feel better in the morning. Well, you've just missed a eight or 10 hour window that your body could be building resistance and wiping something out because you don't have the things on hand. You know, one of the things in, Chinese herbology that you really understand when it comes to colds and flus and infections is that you have to be on top of it. You have to notice, you have to be in touch with how your body feels right at the beginning. And when you catch something at the beginning, you can actually kick it out of your system. You can move beyond it quite quickly and it never penetrates and goes into your body once it penetrates and goes deeper it's much harder to get out so if you feel a scratchy throat and it feels hot and you take some of these medicinal herbs along with your mushrooms and kick it out of your system that'll be a much easier process than waiting until you're coughing up yellow and green liquid from your lungs and that means you've got a deep infection that's going to be harder to clear out. So everything is, is, you know, in the natural field is not just about taking natural things. It's about being aware and being able to notice right at the beginning when things are happening and start to take care of it. You know, that's really where preventive health shines is when you find 
these areas where you can start to notice patterns developing and start taking care of it now, right? And it, it's really helpful with colds and flus to keep it from going deep into your lungs and turning into something like bronchitis, which probably in most cases means you'll be down at the doctor getting one of these antibiotics and then you're going to have to recover from that. And so the main thing I want you to take away from today, though, is that this is my take on the medical system. Today, I talked about a lot about antibiotics, how you're exposed to it in your food, how you can avoid that from eating organic um, food products, especially organic animal-based products, and some products that you can keep in your house um, to boost your immune system in case you're exposed to things. And really, we talked about you know the mushroom complex, which is a blend of of a lot of great organically grown mushrooms that all have a different effect on a slightly different part of your immune system. So it builds this broad-based immunity in your body to help you resist things so that you know maybe you won't get sick, and if you do, it'll be a much shorter duration because your immune system's actually strong. So we covered all those things, but again, it really just points out in the medical world is that we do have a wonderful system that does a lot of wonderful things, but the medical system also creates a lot of problems. And so we have to be on the ball, smart consumers when we use that system and know when it's beneficial and know how to actually recover from some of the things we use from that system. And antibiotics are probably the greatest teaching lesson of all when it comes to Western medicine, because it started out as one of the greatest discoveries of all time, and they still work amazing for most people, and yet they cause an incredible amount of problems because they're overused, they're used in animal feed all the time, and because people don't know that they can easily recover from them if they go through these step-by-step -step process. And that step-by-step -step process has to do with eating food that has beneficial bacteria, things like sauerkraut, fermented foods, taking probiotics, having a probiotic enema if you need to do that. And so we have all these ways of recovering from the Western medical system, and we just need to put it into play. I mean, we need to be somewhat our own doctors unless we're in an emergency situation and we need outside help. And even then, we have to participate in the process of staying in recovery and recovering our health, staying healthy, recovering our health, because no one's going to go home with you and help you with your imbalances that you've been left with from Western medicine. No one's going to tell you the, you know, that your issue of your beneficial bacteria being wiped out is going to be causing you health problems a year and a half from now. You're just the one that's going to be experiencing it. And so I hope today you realize that if you do have to take antibiotics, you have to go through a recovery process. You have to change your diet. You have to eat beneficial food. You have to buy a good probiotic and learn how to use it. So that wraps up our talk today of exploring immunity and surviving antibiotics. This is Roger Drummer with HerbWorks. Thanks for tuning in to another HerbWorks podcast.